Hello and welcome to another episode of Madam Suzanne. Today I want to talk to you about my life as an outlaw. If you haven't heard my story, I was an escort agent for almost 30 years, 20 of them online, but even before that, going back 40 years from today, I was an outlaw. I used to uh, sell coke, then I moved to marijuana, and then I got into the escorting thing uh, in uh, basically in mid 90s, early 90s, mid 90s, and then um, all the way till 2017 when I got in trouble. But um, today I want to focus on how I lived my life as an outlaw, right? To be honest with you, when I look back at my life, I cannot believe that I lived that type of lifestyle. Uh, it's exciting as a young, you know, man. It was never a dull moment. There's always something going on. It was just hustling, go, go, go the whole time. But it comes with a price. Yes, I made a lot of money. However, what came with that money? What came with that lifestyle? Number one, you can never, ever, ever relax. Ever relax. You're always looking over your shoulder. You're always having trust issues. You're always wondering, you know, who's real, who's not. You're always wondering who's going to tell on you. You're always wondering if the calls are being recorded. You're always wondering if you can pay for anything other than cash. Uh, if you're always worried about your bank's bank account uh, how much money you have in your bank account I mean the list goes on and on and on and on it is not fun let me tell you uh, let's take it to the escorts I taught my escorts how to always be careful and be careful who they let into their circle trust you heard me talk about this because those people could make you and break you especially when you're doing something illegal uh, it is not fun to always be on the defensive, to always being worried when you're at parties or gatherings as far as your personal life, that people are gonna ask, hey, what do you do for a living, right? And you gotta lie to cover up for what you really do. And this is one of the reasons why I always had a, a legal business because you know, I would have business cards and say, yeah, this is what I do, this is where my place is, whether it's a restaurant or a nightclub or you fill in the blank. So, it's definitely a challenge and it's definitely stressful. And it definitely builds, builds in a certain I would say weakness in your character because you have trust issues, you have uh, you know, sleeping issues, you have anxiety, you have all sorts of stuff that over the time, over a long period of time, it starts becoming uh, a catalyst to other issues that you might develop in your psyche. Uh, some of it might manifest itself as anger. Some of it might manifest itself as paranoia. Even when there's nothing to be paranoid about. Let me tell you a story. I was... Um, Helping a friend of mine that was uh, working in Las Vegas. She used to work for me and then uh, she went on her own way. And she told me to come and meet her at, her, she was working out of a hotel room by the strip. So, and she had left me a key. I go over there and I go to go in her room and as soon as you open the door really softly, well, there's a guy right there. It's a black guy. And I'm like, what the hell? Because she told me she didn't see black gentlemen for clients. So I closed the door softly. And when I was walking off out of the... I took, I didn't take the elevator down. Now I'm paranoid, right? Because of course I'm doing my thing. I take the stairs down. And, and she was on like 8th floor or something, right? And when I'm going through the side door, I see two undercover cop cars that parked right in front of the side door 
and they are notorious for doing that when they're ready to getting ready to arrest somebody. Now my paranoia is up to the roof, right? It's like on high, high, high alert. Now I ditch my car there. I leave my car in the parking lot, and I uh, started running in the back of the hotel, which was an industrial area. So now it's like one o'clock in the morning or whatever it was. And here I am scaling fences and going over things and really super paranoid. I've never been that paranoid in my whole life, right? And I circle around to all the way to the other side. I can't really remember exactly what I did, but I end up in a cab. Now, I'm telling the cab, take me all the way to the other part of Las Vegas. So, I'm like, now I'm like going towards Henderson and stuff. And now, the cab driver asked me a question, whatever it was. Now, I'm so paranoid. Now, I'm thinking the cab driver is in on it, that he's a cop. And I promise you, I'm not drinking. I'm not on drugs. I'm not doing anything. This is just straight natural paranoia. Just to show you what happens when you're doing something illegal. So everything looked to me like they're cops. Everything. Everything looked like a cop to me. And, um, and needless to say, I told one of my girlfriends to come and pick me up. And I'm like now an hour and a half away from my house. And my car is still parked at the hotel. Finally, when I got to get a hold of that girl, and she told me that that was a, a guy that bringing her you know, she was, uh, you know, a weed smoker and crystal meth or whatever the hell she was doing. So he was bringing her drugs. I didn't know that. The whole time I thought it was a cop. Then seeing those two cop cars down downstairs, right by the by the side door. I mean, it just was all in my mind, right? But that what shows you about the paranoia of being in the illegal business, right? So that's just one example of the manifestation of what happens when you're constantly looking over your shoulder. It is not fun. I've spoken about the advantages of escorting and making the money and being your own boss and all the stuff that I talked about. Uh, that's the upside. And one of the biggest downsides is doing something that's illegal. That's why I cannot wait till they decriminalize or legalize prostitution in the U.S. Because this is ridiculous, right? And to live like that, quite frankly, at my age today, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I really didn't care. I had zero fear. I still have zero fear, but I have more common sense now. But as you get older, you get wiser, you get smarter, a lot more experience. You start having better critical thinking, analytical thinking, and you can process information better and digest them better. So... As an escort, not only do they have to worry about looking over your shoulder for cops, screening for cops. Oh, man. Talk about screening for cops. I remember when I started screening 20 years ago in the early 2000s, late 1999 and stuff. Uh, I know I must have thrown away at least 50% of the great clients. Just because if they said one little thing that I could be misconstrued as law enforcement, I just throw them away. I don't even care. I'm like, nope, that's it. Right? I was so quick on the trigger to just dismiss them and just get rid of them. Of course, not all of them were cops. Now, now I know that, right? So that's between the screening, between paying your bills. You got to be careful how we paid our bills. I did everything with money orders. Do you know what a pain in the butt it was? to pay all my personal bills, my business bills, all the locations I had, especially in Orange County, to pay them all, and they are all about $3,000 worth of bills a month, the rent, electric, gas, uh, water, uh, phone, cable, Wi-Fi, all this stuff, housekeeper. Everything had to be done in money orders or cash. Now times 12 places, plus my place, plus my mom's, I mean, it took me two or three days to pay the bills. Not because I didn't have the cash, of course, but because I had to do it a certain way because we're doing something illegal and it's paranoia. 
So you got your screening with your clients. Always looking out for cops. When you're driving you, I, I, I promise you, I think the last 40 years, 90% of my driving was in the rear view mirror. Sometimes I didn't even know how I got to where I was going, how fast I, I would always miss exits because I didn't know where I was at because I was so focused on if anybody's following me. Of course, later on they got, they got into GPS, they didn't even have to follow you anymore. You know, with all the computer technology and sophistication, all this stuff. So, it's not fun. And I find myself today, even though I'm not doing anything illegal, 100% legal, I find myself looking over my shoulder and looking into my rearview mirror, and I'm like, what the hell am I worried about? I'm not doing anything. You know, I, I don't owe anybody anything. I did my time. I'm off probation. I finished it successfully. I am scot-free, free and clear. I can go anywhere. I can do anything I want. And I'm still paranoid. I got that, right? I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. But it's not as bad as it used to be, trust me. I mean, like, not even 1,000% less. So... Constantly worrying about what you're gonna tell your friends as an escort. Oh, what do you do? Oh, how come you have all this money? They go into your closet, they see all these bags and all these clothes. I'm like, well, I I know you. I just left you working at Starbucks for fifteen hundred bucks, sixteen hundred bucks a month. Where the hell is all this money coming from? Now you're driving a Mercedes. Now you do. Now you move to a nice place at least three to four thousand dollars a month. You got to worry about that. You got to worry about your family asking you questions. So I'm telling you, it's always something. It's never ever. You know, easy. Uh, you know, I often you often heard me say, uh, "Easy money is the toughest money to make." What does that mean? That means that if you think it's easy money to do something illegal, think again because the cost is way over more outweighs what you make just because of the fact that you're looking over your shoulder, you're always paranoid. You're always worried, you have sleepless nights, not fun. So I'm just telling you how, how, how it was with me, right? Especially the last four and a half years and five years when I was in Orange County operating OC Fun. Man, I barely slept. Slept maybe three or four hours was my average a night. And that's not healthy. That is not healthy at all. It took me probably a year to stop feeling normal after I got in trouble. Just to sleep enough. And then that's another stress factor from a different angle. So living under the radar and as an outlaw is not really, really easy. And it's not really fun sometimes. And that's why I say I have mad respect for people that can escort and do everything themselves. It's a lot of pressure between the clients, the screening, doing everything yourself, pictures, videos, website. You know, meeting up with the clients, booking, all the stuff that we talk about. Advertising, promotion, marketing. And then you got to worry about the law on top of everything. you got to worry about somebody hurting you. you got to worry about somebody doing something harmful to you or to rob you. And then you have to worry about your family. You have to worry about your friends. And Do they know? What do they think? What do they say? What, what if they find out? I mean, and on and on and on and on. That's why I have a lot of respect for people that can do what I did in the past, which I've never seen anybody do it on that level with that much traffic. And definitely a lot of respect for independent escorts that can do this on their own and be very successful and make a really good living and have a long career at it. So that's basically it. So... I can't tell you what to do, what not to do. I can only tell you how it was for me. And hopefully you can uh, take something out of this video. Okay, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button if you like this video. If you have not subscribed, please do so. And hit the gray bell for, me, for you to get notifications whenever I post a video or I do my live streaming on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy. 
And if you have not found your happiness, please do so. It's within you. You can get it. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.